we want to talk about some of the free agents that are available in the 2024 off season that the bears might target. I think most bears fans can agree where the holes on this team lie. Um, I think we're looking at, you know, defensive line. I think we're looking at uh, another wide receiver to pair up with DJ Moore. I think we're definitely looking at centers. So those are just some of the positions we're kind of, kind of going to look into today. And David, let's start this off with wide receivers. And this is in no particular order. I just kind of went and, you know, found a good handful of guys, um, took just some stats from their last three years and kind of just looked up their potential market value according to spot track. The first guy we're going to look at today is Michael Pittman Jr. from the Indianapolis Colts. Now, Michael Pittman Jr. is 26 years old. In 2021, he had 88 catches for 1,082 yards, six touchdowns. 2022, 99 catches. It was just shy of that 1,000-yard marker with four touchdowns. 2023, 109 catches, 1,152 four touchdowns and his spot track market value is actually pretty high four years 90.8 million at around 22.8 million a year i mean this guy is a number one wide receiver and you know he puts up some legitimate numbers david uh what are your thoughts on him i really like him he reminds me very much of like dj Moore in terms of situation i think he's super talented he's a number one wide receiver he cycles through quarterbacks which is kind of just the unfortunate part right he can never really put together good chemistry with whoever his starting quarterback is. And he kind of just keeps rotating through him, similar to DJ Moore, but the guy just produces over and over and over again. Right. So he's uh 26, which is in a really great age to kind of hit free agency in an ideal world. I'd love Michael Pittman jr. You get the Colts connection back to Eberflus. You get all these other things. I just think he might be too expensive. Is that big body receiver that the bears are missing on the other side. He's basically the, what, idea chase claypool would have been right he's like six foot four i, would, I want to say he's like 215 220 so he's like a really good not just a you know big body but he's a good route runner he can get open i think ideally he would have been a perfect combo or he is kind of what you're hoping maybe like if you draft marvin harrison jr or uh, roma dunze like that's what he is he's just a much more known commodity if michael Pimmon leaves indianapolis wherever he goes he's going to probably be an absolute stud with a good quarterback um, I'd love to see him on the Bears. I just don't see the Bears committing that much money to two wide receivers when every year there's new rookie wide receivers kind of coming in and kind of showing up right away. So Michael Pittman's going to end up being somebody's number one, like a clear number one. But since DJ Moore's already there, I think, unfortunately, it just doesn't match up perfectly. But I'd love to see him here. And that's why the finances really do play a role in all this um he's a great wide receiver he might be too expensive i don't know what their total uh value or commitment of money towards the wide receiver room is but whatever idea they have they are already paying dj more so with this next guy that we're going to look at it might be kind of the same thing where the situation might not just at, make sense financially but hey we're still going to take a look at some of these guys right because you never know so we're going to take a look at mike evans now mike evans off the tampa bay buccaneers 30 years old in 2021, he had 74 catches for a little bit over 1,000 yards, 14 touchdowns. 2022, 77 catches, 11, 24 yards, six touchdowns. And then last year, 79 catches for 1,235 yards with 13 touchdowns. Spot track has him, you know, earning a four-year $95.3 million deal. Same thing, $23.8 million a year, a little bit more expensive than even a guy like Michael Pittman Jr. But what do you think of Mike Evans? You can get him on a shorter deal if he's willing to kind of do a uh, – I don't know who would be a good comparison late in their career, maybe like these short, you know – highly lucrative deals, kind of a DeAndre Hopkins style going to a team that you wouldn't really expect. But DeAndre Hopkins apparently just was not that desired at the end. I think Mike Evans is going to be just like incredibly highly touted. Um, to any team that gives him a four-year deal, good luck with that. Wide receivers, generally speaking, kind of fall off a cliff. Not necessarily where they just don't produce anymore, but they definitely will produce much, much less. And Within a year or two, I can't imagine Mike Evans producing anywhere near 1,200 yards, 13 touchdowns. Maybe he will. Maybe I'll be wrong. But I think for the Bears, you're nowhere near where you are in terms of talent and competitiveness um, to justify like a two-year $50 million contract and mess up your cap space for the next like year or two. And again, we talk about receiver just being like this you know, depth position. And 
for me, and this is why, you know, this goes always back to how this team is constructed and who we think is a good quarterback here. I always think that a good quarterback or an above average quarterback will make his receivers better. And if you need DJ Moore, Mike Evans, and then a rookie first rounder to look, you know, serviceable or passable or look good, I think that's just, you're asking too much. We look at a guy, and I know he's one of your favorites, like Calvin Ridley. Now, Calvin Ridley, man, time passes you by. He's already 29 years old, which kind of stuck out to me a little bit. For some reason, I still thought he was much younger, but yeah, it is what it is. So I, I actually went back through his last four years because you see that 2022 year suspended. That's the big red flag on his resume right there. But in 2020, he had 90 catches for 1,374 yards and nine touchdowns. In 2021, I believe there was some injury there because he only had 31 catches, 281 yards, two touchdowns. 2022, he got suspended for gambling. And 2023, he had 76 catches for just over 1,000 yards with eight touchdowns. It kind of looked like he went back to that 2020 year he had as far as the statistical numbers go and spot track has him calculated at four years 68.2 million 17 million dollars a year david i know <laughs> i always joke around with you on this guy i know he's definitely one of your favorites um what do you think about his future though moving forward in the nfl it's not so much that he's one of my favorites i just think he's a really good player at his value i think uh when you talk about value ryan poles when that trade went down with uh, Atlanta, you know, the fifth to the conditional second, that always stood out to me as like, that's, you, you were always planning for the future. Essentially, Chase Claypool sat that whole end of the year anyway. I mean, in all intents and purposes, the guy barely played. And when he did play, he was just irrelevant. So that was one of those things where I'm like, why would you sit, you know, why would you take Claypool? And then, you know, I understood the public pressure and all that, but like if your plan was the future. Imagine this year coming out with Calvin Ridley or last year Calvin Ridley and DJ Moore. Oh yeah, if we versus, got if we got a thousand yards and eight touchdowns out of Chase Claypool, he'd still be here. <laughs> exactly. So that was one of those things that it just frustrated me back looking back on it. I thought the risk reward was much greater on Calvin Ridley than Chase Claypool. And I never really liked Chase Claypool trade to begin with, but it, it is what it is. Right now, Calvin Ridley is super intriguing. He's interested in joining the Bears, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I saw a social media post where he, you know, mentioned something about playing for the Bears. And uh, I think he's kind of in that right age of, you know, hey, he still has something to prove. He's not really looking to break the bank, I would imagine. I would, I would think, and this is me being just me, I always imagine players would take maybe two or $3 million less to go to a competitive team or Super Bowl winning team. But we, as we know, like for a lot of players in the NFL, it's a job. They're there to make the most money and, and get out, right? Take care of their families and all that. And I understand all that. I think it'd just be a really interesting pairing if you get Calvin Ridley. I think that takes a lot of pressure off the first round and the second round to go and get like a really top tier, you know, second person to DJ Moore. Um, I think the value wise, it's there. I wouldn't do a four year deal. Uh, if he's willing to take like two or three at like 17 a mil a year, I'd be much more interested. He's a bit of a risk reward player, but if you can get him at the right price, I think that's a good complimentary receiver. Since you are going to be running three wide receivers on this new potential Bears offense, regardless of who's quarterback, you need depth. You need four or five guys that can kind of pop in there. So you you more than likely will spend money on one guy this offseason. This might be the one. We'll see. Well, moving on, the next guy we're going to look at is Gabriel Davis off the Buffalo Bills. In 2021, he had 63 catches for 549 yards, six touchdowns. 2022, he had 48 catches, 836 yards for seven touchdowns. 2023, sorry, 2023, he had 45 catches for 746 yards and seven touchdowns. Uh, his market value is sitting at four years, $54.5 million which is about $13.6 million a year. As you can see, this guy um, definitely pretty consistent throughout the last couple of years. He's only 24 years old. Gabe Davis, to me, is exactly what kind of his stats show. He is very solid. He's a decent route runner for his size, right? Like he's 6'2", 225, nice size. Um, but when you have Josh Allen at quarterback, and Stefan Diggs for two of those years, like taking that much attention away, I think 2022 showed exactly like his peak. And I'm not sure if 
it, it's nice that he's a young age and you can get him as like a rotation guy, but I don't think I would be comfortable. Like if I, I say like, it's my money, but um, I think at $13 million a year, you better know for a fact you have a quarterback who can maximize the potential of what Gabe Davis can do. Cause I don't think Gabe Davis will significantly increase your quarterback's abilities, right? I don't think he's doing anything on his own that makes the quarterback significantly better. He's a really, really solid plug-and-play wide receiver. He's probably a solid second receiver, which in theory, that's what you need from uh, DJ Moore's counterpart. And then you get, you know, like a younger, much younger guy. And at 24, you can potentially hope that there's a lot of upside still in Gabe Davis. Um, I, I feel like those numbers that we see, though, are very misleading. And I think some team is going to probably overpay Gabe Davis. If it's the Bears, I wouldn't be upset, but I would be kind of like, I would have liked something a little bit more concrete or something that's a little bit more complementary to what the Bears need. Okay, well, moving on to the next guy, we're going to look at our very own Darnell Mooney. 26 years old. In 2021, he had 81 catches for 1,055 yards, four touchdowns. 2022, he had 40 catches, 493 yards, two touchdowns. That's the year he got hurt. And in this last year, he had career low, 31 catches, 414 yards with one touchdown. Um, Spotrack still has him at, you know, four years, 42 million, 10.4 million a year potentially. Uh, what do you think about holding on to Darnell Mooney? Uh, if he's willing to take a hometown deal, like under 10 million, I think you're, I think you're still risking a lot because you've seen what he does and what he can do. Um, I think he's not a good compliment to DJ Moore anymore than in what we thought theoretically he could be. He's a small undersized, like outside receiver, I think. And, uh, I think you've got to like use him the right way. Maybe if. Shane Waldron knows what to do with a guy like Darnell Mooney and he's super confident. He likes him. I'd be fine with it. I guess, you know, it just all depends with how the bears want to see him, but I don't, I think injuries are already a problem clearly. Right. Um, the drop off has been consistent and I think he's ready for a fresh start. And I think the bears are too. So I think it's just one of those, everything aligns to have a, a good mutual parting of ways. So if you really like him as a organization and he's just a good guy and you want to keep him here for a few years and Justin likes him and he stays and however they want to handle it. I mean, it's, you know, it is what it is, but if that's who you trot out as your number two next year, or maybe even your number three, I don't, I don't feel confident in his growth. Okay. Well, the next guy we're going to take a look at is DJ Chark, DJ Chark Jr. 27 years old. In 2021, he had 22 catches for only 154 yards, two touchdowns. 2022, 52 catches, 500 yards, three touchdowns. 2023, 66 catches, 525 yards, and five touchdowns. Um, and he is looking at a value of one year, $10.9 million a year. David, what do you think of DJ Chark Jr.? DJ Chark is, to me, like the – almost perfect risky type of one year deal you should take for Shane Waldron. Um, he is a very fast six, three, six, four guy. And if you need somebody on the other side of the field, just to kind of imitate, I'm not even comparing, it's not the implication, but imitate uh, DK Metcalf, right? You want a six, two, six, three guy with just like pure speed to stretch the field on one side so that you can open the offense on the other side. Right. Um, or just like, make safeties respected or bite. Um, yeah, that's like the perfect kind of frame, body, age. He probably wants to go play with somebody who can maybe show, you know, he probably is like, hey, I've been signing these one-year deals. I think I'm better than this. Um, I think I should be a two or a three, but right now he's like a four on most teams, like a, a, a legitimate cores. Right? And David, you know, he is coming off the Panthers where he's played there for five years um, so he has plenty of experience playing with DJ Moore. Yeah, that too. So like communication within the locker room, just if he's a nice guy and even if they just text each other, you have a decent amount of connection. Even if you put him on a two-year deal and then, you know, he ends up uh, sliding down the depth chart next year. Or, I mean, I think there's upside to be had on a decently priced deal. And I think you just, you know, we're comparing it to Darnell Mooney. We just said how I don't want Darnell Mooney. This guy's a year older with, you know, similar stats in the last two years. 
the difference is the frame and what they do, right? Like you need a, a guy to stretch the field. You need a third wide receiver who's big and fast and a big target. Darnell Moody's not that guy. DJ Chark is definitely a, a better option in terms of complementary building a, a wide receiver room. So I would be okay with like a two or uh, like a one or two year deal for DJ Chark. So the next guy we're going to look at is I think personally my favorite option out of all these, and it's Tyler Boyd. I know he's 29 years old. In 2021, he had 67 catches for 828 yards, five touchdowns. In 2022, 58 catches, 762 yards, five touchdowns. 2023, 67 catches, 667 yards, two touchdowns. But his value, three years, 26.1 million, 8.7 million a year. I think this guy's a great value. Um, I think he brings a lot to the table. I agree. Uh, I think he has experience kind of playing multiple uh, – roles like he's always playing wide receiver but in terms of what he's done he kind of went from you know being like a second guy to being a third guy now with uh t higgins and jamar chase right he's played with a multitude of quarterbacks and kind of still produced through it um he's not the speed guy that dj Chark would be but you know it's very rare to find like track speed at receiver that also is good and can run routes you know it's a it's a rare combination um but he is a bigger body. He's like 6'2". He's a little thinner frame, so he's, you know, in that way. But stays healthy. Um, like you said, I think it's a it's an interesting person to put in there because he's 29. He'd be a very, very good, like, mature figure in the wide receiver room if you do draft somebody that's similar to him. If you still – you know, you could take Tyler Boyd, feel confident that he would be your number two in, during the season when it opened up. And you also could like roll him into the number three spot if you do take like a first round receiver. If you feel like you want to invest in that position at like the second round or first round. And I feel like I agree with you. He, he's very versatile. But the problem with that is a lot of teams are probably going to feel the same way. So I think that three years, 26 million is like very accurate, if not a little under. They'll probably get a three year deal, maybe at like $10 million a year. Um, And if we're wrong about that, I'd be surprised and I'd be very excited. Like, just hop on that Tyler Boyd contract. Two to three years, play him until he's 32. That's like the right age to have a contract expire for a wide receiver. And like you said, it's a good – he's one of my favorites on the options too because he kind of fits multiple roles that you're hoping that each guy would, right? Like the older veteran guys that we talked about at the beginning that you don't want to pay that much to, um, similar to like DJ Chark or the younger guys that you – want to experiment with maybe have them step up a little bit at 29 that's rare but it's not impossible and then yeah and then you can kind of transition him out of the team and then have your younger guys step up so i i'm a fan too that's probably my first or second choice as well 